HMS Kelly can probably be called the unluckiest ship in the Royal Navy. During a short career she would go in and out of dry dock for repairs, sometimes no more than two weeks after her previous repair. She would suffer storm damage, collisions, mines, torpedoes and dive bombers before she would finally be sunk in the Battle of Crete. Her motto, keep on instead of hold on, would be fitting considering she kept on fighting and doing her job despite her bad luck. The J, K and N class destroyers were returned to smaller and more torpedo focused design than the preceding tribal class, which were more of a short range brawler. Coming out of the 1936 design program, they were designed by A.P. Cole and would be constructed by eight different yards each building, um, 1J and 1K. Later, when the N class was started, these would be split by four of the yards. The basis for their design called out for an as, as heavy torpedo armament as possible, with guns and speed coming second and third. Coming in at 108 meters in length and displacing between 1750 and 2400 tons, one ship from each class would be built as flotilla leader with just smaller visible differences. These first among equals. HMS's Jervis, Kelly and Napier would be fitted with a larger aft deckhouse to house the additional command staff, but would as a result lose the TSDS, or two-speed destroyer minesweeping equipment on the stern. The Kellys were armed with three twin Mark 12 4.7 inch or 120mm guns in shielded turrets. The guns could only elevate to 40 degrees, a serious design flaw. The guns could not be elevated enough to protect against dive bombers attacking your own ship. You could only fire upon dive bombers after they had already dropped their bombs. which would actually end up sinking quite a few of the vessels in the class. Also, the open back of the gun turrets will also leave the gun crews vulnerable in fight, exposed to shrapnel and explosions. The anti-aircraft weaponry was severely limited early in the war with two quad 50 caliber machine guns and one quad 40 mm pom-pom. This would be improved by replacing one of the torpedo launchers with a 4 inch high angle gun. This wasn't really that effective. These high angle guns would come and go on several of the destroyers throughout the war and one can only guess what the Admiralty thought of having one of their torpedo focused destroyer classes only carrying half of their exploding fish. To improve the anti-aircraft power, later refits would see the addition of two twin 20mm Orlicons on the searchlight deckhouse as well as anti-aircraft gunnery radars for the ships that survived long enough. So what can be said for the career of HMS Kelly? She was commissioned into the Royal Navy on the 23rd of August 1939. When Britain declared war on Germany just about a week later, 
One of her first tasks was to transport the Duke and Duchess of Windsor from France to England. She would then continue her working up period with coastal patrols and escort work around the British Isles. In November, she went a bit too fast through a North Sea storm and had to spend some time for repair, leaving the yard on the 13th of December 1939. The next day, she was tasked to assist two tankers in trouble. At around 4 pm, she sighted the Athol Templar on fire and moved to go alongside to take off survivors. At 4.12 p.m. a curious bumping was felt, followed by a large explosion. Hitting a mine that luckily went off just behind the ship, she nonetheless suffered heavy damage. Partially flooded and without steering control, she had to be towed back to Hawthorne Leslie's for further repair, which would last until the 28th of February 1940. A few days after her repairs were complete, on the 8th of March, while escorting convoy ON-18, she would meet up with HMS Gurkha escorting convoy HN-17. Colliding in the night, Gurkha would suffer little damage, but Kelly would need to have a 10 meter gash in her hull repaired. After the mine incident in December, Captain Mountbatten of Kelly had drafted an emergency message to be sent if his ship was hit. The message sent after the collision was Have been hit by mine or torpedo. I'm uncertain which. Unimpressed, Gurkha responded with That was not a mine, that was me. Germany invaded Norway on the 9th of April 1940, and Norway would soon be reinforced by the Royal Navy and the English Army. However, it soon became clear that the army would have to withdraw. HMS Kelly had completed her repairs on the 25th of April and soon joined the evacuation convoy as escort. Entering Namsos Harbour along with the cruiser York, she would take 270 French troops and bring them back to Britain. On the 8th of May, en route to act as escort for HMS Birmingham, 10.44 p.m. a blurred white object was seen off the port beam. The torpedo launched by German e-boat passed under the bridge and exploded underneath. The shock of the explosion opened the hull, blowing out one of her boiler rooms and flooding the other. Losing all power and listing, she was taken under tow once again. Only by getting rid of most of the crew and all unnecessary top weight and superb ship construction and damage control work by her remaining crew did she not sink. She went back into dry dock on the 13th of May. She had been in service for all but 11 days since her last repair. After seven months of repairs, she was ready for action on the 3rd of December 1940. As she was leaving the Tyne River, as was now the custom, she managed to ram as a scorpion and had to go back for repairs until the 16th. She would spend the winter of 1941 on patrols in home waters. True to form, she would suffer storm damage and lose one of her ship's boats on the 15th of January, but the repairs didn't take long this time. In February, Kelly, Kandahar and Kipling would escort the home fleet in their search for the German battlecruisers Scharnhorst and Gneisnau, which were supposed to be at sea.
After the fall of Greece, the 5th destroyer flotilla was tasked to reinforce the Mediterranean fleet. Kelly, Kipling, Kelvin, Kashmir, Jackal and Jersey entered the Mediterranean on the 24th of April 1941 and joined with the mine layer Abdeel and the cruiser Dido and reached Malta on the 25th. During the Battle of Crete, Kelly and Kashmir had engaged troop carriers and airfields in support of the New Zealand Navy. On the 23rd of May, they were steaming to join Kipling when they were spotted by 24 Ju-87 dive bombers. Kashmir was the first to be hit by aircraft from, from the third wave of attacks. One bomb struck amidships on the upper deck and broke her back. Kashmir sank in two minutes. Kelly continued to evade, but she was struck by a hit to her aft turret while turning at high speed. Healing through her turn and with her port side blown open, she was un unable to right herself. She listed the port and capsized and sank in 30 minutes. Of the 24 ships of the JK and N-class destroyers, 13 would be lost. Jackal, Jaguar, Juno, Janus, Jersey, Jupiter, Kelly, Kandahar, Kashmir, Khartoum, Kingston, Kipling and Nestor. 